Welcome to my review of the Sealy VS820 pressure bleeder. I have read a number of comments on Amazon about this device and it seems a lot of people are having problems getting it to work correctly and so I thought what I'd do is share my experiences in what I have had to do to fettle this to get it working satisfactorily. One confession before we start, this isn't actually a Sealy VS820, it is actually an Alba ALB30570. Clearly it's exactly the same piece of kit, manufactured in the same factory in China, uh, just branded under the Alba name instead of Sealy. And so uh, although my comments are relating to my particular uh, bleeder, uh, they are um, the same. It's worth knowing that Alba market the same piece of equipment because unlike Sealy, they do a wider range of pressure cap adapters. And so I'll uh, give the information uh, in the video relating to where these can be sourced. Now the main problem that people have with the bleeder appears to be leaks. And in fact, mine, when I received it as from the factory, pumped it up and it wouldn't hold any pressure at all. I couldn't even get the gauge to register. And it turned out that the pressure was leaking from the filler lid here, which is the same as in the majority of other cases. People put cling film uh, around the threads, um, all, sorts of, uh, all sorts of fixes, uh, but in actual fact, all you need to do is remove the rubber sealing washer here and put a very, very thin smear of silicon grease on both sides of the washer, replace the washer, and then return the cap. Now when I got it originally, I could get it to seal if I turned this up like a gorilla. Um, but now you only have to turn it finger tight and it seals straight away. Um, the grease I used is Dow Corning silicon electrical grease, but in actual fact any silicon grease, or in fact red rubber grease, is okay. But what you need is a grease which will not attack the rubber seal or the plastic. And most mineral-based greases, and Vaseline for example, will do precisely that. They will attack the seal. So do use silicon grease or red rubber grease. Don't use ordinary grease or Vaseline. Second place it can leak from is from the gauge. It's a simple quarter BSP fitting, screw fitting. So you could unscrew it and put silicon grease on it if you want. Don't over tighten it because you could very, very easily rip out the threads because it's just plastic in the bottle. Um, I'm not going to touch mine because it's not leaking there. The other place it can leak is from where the pressure bleed pipe comes off. I've removed it to, for, to, in order to explain something else on it, which I'll go into, into in a minute. Um, and so I won't go into that just now. I'll explain that in a minute. And then finally, it can leak from the main um, pump to the vessel attachment point where it's screwed on. Now. This thing, I kid you not, is assembled by Arnold Schwarzenegger. They've done it up ridiculously tight, and I suspect they've done so in order to stop the leaks, rather than just putting some sealant on the rubber gasket, which would have made far more sense. Anyway, to get it off, I removed the compression fitting. There's a black compression fitting that goes there. It just gives you a little bit more clearance. Remove the silicon pipe, remove this lid, and then if you wrap some cloth around the cap, I used a motorcycle oil filter chain wrench on it to get it off. You could use a strap wrench or alternatively put this in a vise, just put some something within the jaws of the vise to protect the lid because it's brittle plastic, you don't want to go damaging it. And then with the chain wrench around here and grasping onto the bottle for all I was worth and a lot of force, um, an even force rather than yanking it, um, it gradually came undone. And once it, once it comes loose by a quarter of a turn or so, it comes off reasonably easily. And then, having done that, all you need to do, it's the same thing, remove the rubber sealing washer, a very, very light coat of silicon grease, just enough to make the washer shiny, you don't need gorbs of the grease hanging off everywhere, just enough to make the washer shiny. Some people reverse the direction that the washer goes in. Don't do that. It's clearly designed so that the flat face of the washer is up against the lid and the ribbed face is up against the neck of the bottle. Um, just enough silicon grease to make it shiny. could smear a little bit on the threads if you want. And then, again, screw it down until it's just finger tight and I promise you that will make a perfect seal. It will not leak. One or two people have commented that these caps crack after repeated use of the bleeder. And I would suggest the reason why 
is because they might be over pumping it, pumping a bit too much, but I suggest it's mainly because the caps are done up so tight from the factory and it is relatively brittle plastic and I imagine that what makes it, um, that's what makes it leak. This uh, joint here is just where the pump goes in and it draws air in through a hole in the top here. This bit doesn't need to be leak proof. I did actually undo it and draw the pump out just so I could smear some silicon grease on the shaft here because it was slightly graunchy. But um, other than that, that doesn't need any attention at all. So another fault with this device is that the pickup tube finishes about three quarters of an inch off the bottom. And that's three quarters of an inch off the bottom at the edge of the vessel. In the middle, it's probably about an inch to an inch and a half off the bottom which means that you need probably four or five hundred millilitres of brake fluid in here before it even makes contact with the bottom of the pickup tube. Clearly that's no good at all. So what I decided to do was replace the pickup tube with another one and direct it into the bottom of one of the feet, which is the lowest point in the reservoir here, so that it will use all the brake fluid pretty much that you put in. You're not going to waste any. Uh, and that clearly needs doing, because as it is, it's really not very satisfactory. The only get around, if you don't modify it, is to lean the container in the direction of the pickup tube, and that will help a little bit, but it's still uh, rather irritating, I have to say. So, to fix this, what you do is you... Let's put this brake tube back in place. This is just temporary. Imagine that's attached like so. You just undo the compression fitting and slide it up the hose and then where the hose is connected to the nipple here, pull it and tease it from the bottom of the nipple and remove it and then put that all to one side. Now the nipple itself is a pretty tight fit in the neck of the bottle here so you need to get it between your finger and thumb and pull for all you're worth whilst shaking it or waggling it from side to side and gradually tease it out. It'll take, it took me 10 or 15 minutes made my fingers pretty sore as well, so wrap a, a cloth around it so it doesn't dig quite so much into your fingers. But be prepared for a bit of a tussle. Do not be tempted to put pliers on it, because you might go snapping it off or damage the neck of the bottle, but more, more likely than that you'll put scores in it. Put scores in it, again you run the risk of fluid or air leaks. Anyway, having pulled it high enough as it is now, so that the lower half of the nipple within the tube itself clears the neck, then it comes out easy uh, because the tube itself is a very slightly smaller diameter than the, um, than the hole in the bottle there. Uh, now, the tubing that you need to replace this is HDPE, so it's high, def high, high density polyethylene, and you need 6mm outside diameter and 4mm inside diameter. And I got a metre of it on eBay for about a quid. So that's the tubing you need, HDPE. 6mm outside, 4mm inside. Now when you cut it off at the bottom here, cut it off at 45 degrees so that if it makes contact with the bottom, you cut it slightly too long, it won't block the pickup. Obviously if you cut it at 90 degrees and it butts up against the bottom of the tank, it, it, it will obstruct the bleed, it obstruct the take up of uh, fluid. I don't think HDPE is particularly good at thermal softening, so if you heat it up, it doesn't tend to go all soft, so it's not probably as easy to mould into the shape that you want, but it will do. So put some rubber gloves on, boil a pan of water, get your metre length of polythene poly HDPE tubing, put it in and just apply a force to it, and as you feel it give very slight, you don't need much of a bend in it, take it out, let it cool, and it will take on a set. You can see I've got this one slightly bent because I've had a little go with it. Then a little bit further down the tube, heat it up, dip it in the water whilst it's under a constant pressure, and bend it back the other way, take it out, let it cool. What you'll then have is a pipe with a slight chicane in it. And if you do it just right, you'll feed it in through the hole and it will describe a nice little S bend and you'll get it to go right down into the bottom. And then what you need to do is cut it to length exactly and take your time so that when the top of the nipple here is flush with the top of the tank, you can cut it off so that the bottom of the tube, cut at 45 degrees, just touches the bottom here and then you'll get every last drop of uh, fluid out of here without drawing air up through it. Same as uh, before, when you put the compression cap back on, a little bit of silicon on the wash, a little bit of silicon on the threads and tighten it down by hand. It doesn't need to be particularly tight, mine didn't leak from there. 
So that's that's uh, the modifications that you need to do to the bottle itself, and it's very easily done. The next problem people were having was getting a decent seal using the cap that's supplied with the kit. Now it does say it fits the majority of European vehicles, and therein lies the problem. Uh, it doesn't fit all of them, and it's an E20 thread, and it, uh, it, it, I, I, the problem is that there are hundreds and hundreds of different caps, and they all look very similar. Uh, and if you've got a slightly loose fit and you screw this on, two risks, two risks. Firstly, it'll potentially leak, and secondly, if you pump this up, particularly if you pump it up too high, it's likely to blow the cap off, and then you'll end up with brake fluid spraying everywhere. Now, the Albert Diagnostics Company, not only do they supply this bleeder, they supply this cap, they also provide a universal cap and a range of vehicle-specific caps. So if you've got the CD bit of kit and you're wondering whether your cap is right for your vehicle, go to the Albert Diagnostics website, that's Albert, A-L-B-A, and look at their vehicle compatibility list. Now, this cap, which comes with the Sealy pressure bleeder, Alba supply as the ALB 30644B. And if you check which vehicles it fits, if yours is included, then your Sealy will fit. If yours isn't, then it won't. So you've got two choices. You either buy the universal adapter lid, which I don't like much, or you can look down their list and buy the Alba vehicle specific adapter cap for your car. Unfortunately, Alba don't supply retail, they only supply for trade. And so if you want anything that is from Alba, you'll need to buy it. Um, well, you can do an internet search, but Cromwell Tools is uh, the people that I got, um, got this from and uh, some other adapter caps which I've ordered. So having got the right cap for your vehicle, uh, it's very important, clearly, to make sure that it doesn't leak when it's, when it's uh, attached to the master cylinder reservoir. And again, there's a sealing washer in here. I wouldn't put silicon grease or red rubber grease on it because, again, you have got a very real potential for your brake fluid to come into contact with it and then you'll get uh, chemicals into your brake fluid that you perhaps don't want. So, again, prior to using it, prise the uh, washer out of here and give it a very, very light smearing and some brake fluid before you, put it, before you put it back. And then, in use, I would pump this gently until brake fluid starts to come up the pipe and then starts to descend down through the dip tube. And then put this onto your master cylinder reservoir and screw it down firmly and then press, pressurise this to your working pressure. Now, prior to doing this, you should have taken out the majority of the fluid in your master uh, cylinder reservoir uh, with a turkey baster or whatever, um, and you will then have an air gap, a void, between the top of the brake fluid and the bottom of the cap. And <clears throat> if you leave it for 20 minutes or so, if there's no air leak, then the fluid will stay in position. If you've got an air leak, then the cap is releasing pressure and you'll get brake fluid feed through down the pipe and you'll see the height in the reservoir uh, rise. Now it's a very important thing to check because if you screw it down and pressurise it and think oh, I'm off, I'm going to go and get on now and bleed my brakes, you could spend half an hour breathing all your brakes very carefully, come back and of course the, the, the air's leaked out of here, the brake fluid's then coming down the threads and you've got brake fluid all over your master cylinder and potentially over the bulkhead in your car and damaging your paintwork and whatever. So do be careful to make sure that the thing has sealed properly before you go bleeding your brakes. One final caveat as well, uh, it does say in the instructions to release the pressure before you remove the, before you remove the cap. That's pretty obvious because uh, you're going to have a high pressure brake fluid pistol spraying uh, brake fluid everywhere which isn't desirable either. So prior to removing this from the master cylinder reservoir, release the pressure using the pressure relief valve, and then to make sure that all the pressure is gone and you're not in any danger of having drips and dribbles from here, uh, I would take the cap off, and then you know that all the pressure is released. Unscrew this, 
and uh, catch the drips carefully, top your brake cylinder up to the correct level, replace your original master cylinder cap and, uh, and that is uh, job done. Now, one or two other points. People have commented that um, they've blown the cap off the master cylinder when the, when, the, uh, when, when the thing's in use, or they've actually managed to split the um, silicon tubing in between the bleeder and the cap here. And there's a couple of possibilities. The first one is, of course, they've overpressured this. I personally think 20 psi is probably a bit too high. I'm going to run it between 8 and 10. The downside is that you're going to have to keep pumping up more regularly. If you haven't got as much pressure in here, then obviously it's not as much air. You're going to have to keep press, uh, pumping it um, in between each brake, probably. That's a small price to pay if it means that you're not going to have uh, the, the risk of a, of, a, of a sort of little explosion and brakes fluid getting everywhere. Uh, and the other point is, of course, it, it negates any possible risk of splitting the silicon tubing. I find that very hard to believe that people have done it, but they have done it, and I would suggest they've managed to do it by over-pressuring it. Um, unfortunately, the threads on the master cylinder reservoir are quite coarse, and I was looking at this thread, and it's only one complete turn from when the threads engage to when they're fully done up. Um, is only about one turn, so clearly it is important, as I said before, to make sure you're using the right cap. Don't assume, because you've got a European vehicle, this will fit. It might look like it's fitting, but the fit might not be as good as it needs to be. And if this is a larger diameter than the threads, and they're only just biting, and you pump this up, then there's a risk of it popping off. Uh, and as I said, go to the Arbor Diagnostics website, and you can, uh, you can find out for sure whether, whether your um, adapter cap uh, fits. Now, unfortunately, it appears that Albert don't do motorcycle adapter caps, and I actually got this not just to use on my car, but I wanted to use it on my motorcycles. I've got an S1000 RR and I've got a Triumph Tiger, and uh, I wanted to use it on those as well. And what I needed um, was some, first of all, some spare caps, which I bought off eBay. I've got three master cylinder caps that are CNC aluminium. And all I was going to do is buy a couple of these hydraulic uh, connectors and put them in the top of the spare cap and then I'd be able to use it, use it on the motorbikes as well. But for love and money I can't find these things. They're not pneumatic adapters and they're different from the vast majority of hydraulic ones. The vast majority of hydraulic couplings have a valve in both sides so when you disconnect them they don't lose fluid. These clearly don't have a valve in them. So I've had to order from Alba Diagnostics uh, three spare adapter caps, and I got the cheapest ones they do, which is a 560-11, which is a 50.5 millimeter diameter screw-on cap. It won't fit anything I've got, but anyway, I'll break it off, and I'll just use these adapters in the uh, lids that I've bought off eBay for the motorbike, and then I'll be able to use it on the motorbike as well. Uh, anyway, I hope. Oh, by the way, if anyone knows where you can get these from, do let me know. But as I say, they're not PCL or Euro pneumatic adapters. They are. Uh, hydraulic ones, but God knows where you get them from. Anyway, hopefully uh, that's been of some use. Don't be put off buying this on the strength of people's reviews on Amazon, because whilst you shouldn't have to do all this, uh, it's the price we pay for buying, uh, for supporting the Chinese economy, I guess, and buying cheaply made Chinese bits of kit. Now the reality is actually it is quite good quality. What lets it down is the assembly, uh, whereas they could have just used a bit of crease and a bit of sealant on the washers. They haven't and, it's, and it causes a lot of problems for a lot of people. But if you're prepared to make the effort uh, with, this, with the silicon grease and in particular, and I think the most significant one is um, increasing the length of the uptake tube, it's pretty easy. It's an hour's work and uh, it converts it into a very usable and a very uh, effective piece of kit and definitely a useful armoury for your vehicle servicing tools. So, Alba Diagnostics website, that's where you need to go uh, to get a suitable adapter and in particular if you don't want to use the universal one. Um, thank you for watching.